Okay, today I want to talk about a subject that's kind of near and dear to my heart, and that involves a request that I got. Uh, somebody asked me to do a video about canine nutrition or pet nutrition in general, and I kind of uh, I'm kind of an expert on this. I've had several dogs. Those of you who are, are subscribed to my channel or have seen my past videos, you know that you're probably familiar with my more my most recent dog, which was Bruno. Uh, Bruno was a little dog. He uh, he he. <laughs> when I got him, he was eight pounds, and he got up to fourteen pounds, and then he got towards the end of his life, he dropped all the way down to seven pounds. But the the essential point is that I had Bruno for twenty years, and Bruno was twenty three years old. So, you know, as they say, as the cliche says, I must have been doing something right. Now, I'll tell you all in the onset, in case you're curious, uh, I'm sure that there was a genetic component involved. And uh, certainly, uh, Bruno, being a small dog, had a genetic advantage. The reason you, those of you who know anything about dogs, are probably familiar with the fact that larger dogs, such as Great Danes, and uh, the bigger dogs, have much shorter lives. Great Danes, for example, are wonderful, wonderful dogs. They're great dogs. Sadly, they are, their average lifespan is only seven years. And that holds true for most large, large dogs. Why do large dogs live shorter lives than smaller dogs? The reason is, has to do, they didn't know that for years. Uh, they do, they, there, there is a corollary to human physiology, however. Shorter, pe shorter humans tend to live longer than bigger humans. The people that live to over 100, and I've written this in my Applied Metabolics publication, people that usually live to 100 or more are almost invariably short to the point of being tiny. I mean, a lot of them are five feet or under. The woman who, who, owns, uh, who holds the world record for the longest lifespan, her name is Jean Calmet. She was a French woman. She lived to 122. Uh, she was only four foot eight. <laughs> I mean, she's practically a midget, but that gives you an idea. But now, what is this of the dogs? Well, it turns out that they didn't know why. Why is it that you know large dogs have some have shorter lifespans than small dogs, and they figured it out. The same reason why shorter humans uh, live longer. It has to do with a hormone that many bodybuilders are familiar with, called insulin-like growth factor one or IGF one. Uh, IGF-1 uh, is what accounts for the large, si larger size in bigger dogs like Great Danes. They're bigger because they secrete more IGF-1. In humans, IGF-1 is associated with growth hormone. An excess of growth hormone, IGF-1, creates a condition called gigantism. And uh, this is the people that are like 7 foot 9 and over. Most of your tall basketball players, you know, over 7 foot tall, also have excessive growth hormone and IGF-1 activity, which accounts for their uh, great height. And unfortunately, it also means they're not going to live, let's, uh, they'll be lucky to make it to 80 years old, these super tall basketball players. IGF-1 tends to, unfortunately, a large amount, I should ha have to emphasize, larger amounts of IGF-1 shorten both dog lives and human lives. The latest study shows that for to live, you don't want to have a deficiency of IGF-1 because in humans, a deficiency of IGF-1 adversely affects brain cells or neurons, heart cells, and connected tissue. What you want to have as you age is moderate levels. Now, do, now smaller dogs have much less production of IGF-1. Now, how does that to relate to uh, small dog longevity? Well, the may, you might... people. <laughs> Most of you might know the, le the two leading causes of human death in order are cardiovascular disease is number one. And, uh, and uh, in fact, I, I think the statistics show that uh, there's, a, uh, there's a, person, uh, a person in the world who dies of cardiovascular disease every two seconds. And I say, let's get that person some help. But moving on, the second leading cause of death in humans is cancer. Now, in dogs, it's reversed. And dogs, cancer. Many of you who've had dogs who are listening to this, you probably had the sad experience I have of losing dogs to cancer. Two of my dogs died of cancer. Uh, they were kind of cancer that were highly, let's say, uh, certain types of dogs are more susceptible to these types of cancer. But cancer is the number one killer of dogs. IGF-1 has a relationship to cancer. 
They don't really know the relationship. They don't know whether tumor cells secrete IGF-1, and they would do so because IGF-1 not only prevents the uh, tumor cells from self-destructing in a process called apoptosis, but IGF-1 allows cancer cells to spread. So, you know, not having a lot of IGF-1 favors less development of cancer, also favors longevity in dogs. This is the reason why small dogs tend to live longer. Of course, small dogs have their own genetic problems, uh, such as the pug breeds, you know, having that kind of pushed in face and peds their breathing. Uh, they were selectively genetically uh, designed for that, which is very cruel because it, 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 it's not good for the dogs. You see, they always have, they're always wheezing and they have trouble breathing. Some people think that's cute. It's not fun for the dogs. But anyway, getting back to uh, Bruno, uh, I think that one of the reasons why he lived that long to 23, and the, by the way, just for, by comparison, the oldest known dog in the world is now 31 years of age. So Bruno came pretty close. Bruno was the equivalent of a human, uh, probably being about 130 years old. So, you know, that's pretty good. Now, one of the, one of the keys of, uh, of why Bruno lived, a uh, let's say, a relatively long life was because I never gave him crap food. Having studied human nutrition myself for, <laughs> you won't Actually, it's, it's 60 years. I've studied human nutrition for 60 years, especially sports nutrition. And I was very conscious of dog nutrition right from the start. And one thing I noticed, right from, again, from the first time I had a dog, which was about maybe 30 years ago, 25 years ago, I, I questioned the vets, the veterinarians, and I was, sh I was surprised to see they had something in common with human physicians, and that is a surprisingly lack of knowledge of canine nutrition. Uh, they have they don't know much more than a person on the street. They are not trained in canine nutrition. But I'll tell you what does happen. Most veterinary schools have are sponsored by certain purveyors of dog foods, in particular a line called Hills Science Nutrition. It's a line of dog foods and if you go to your average vet and you know, and he's and he's and uh, let's say your dog has a kidney infection or liver problem or heart problem, they'll give you a specialized food that's almost always made by Hill Science. Now, what's the problem with that? If you if you the dog needs that specialized food, then you should give it to him, because you know the the design. For example, a dog with kidney uh, problems has to be conscious of how much protein he he or she eats. So they have a Hills food that's a little bit lower in protein but has the other nutrients needed to support canine health. Uh, and the, under those conditions, in other words, pathological conditions, you probably want to use one of the Hills specialty foods. However, the routine use of Hills dog food, in other words, the type, the type that's sold in, in, uh, in uh, pet food stores, is in a word garbage. I've looked at their labels and I was just shocked how bad that they use below par ingredients. Their main protein sources are meat byproducts. That's the scrap. That's the crap that they throw away in meat processing. Hooves, hair, all that garbage. That's the main source of protein in Hills Food Dog uh, products for everyday use. Not, not, to, not to treat diseases. And they also include cheap sources of protein like soybean, which are harder to digest and don't support muscle uh, uh, health in humans or dogs. Soybean is basically more for the, uh, uh, it's actually uh, uh, utilized by gastrointestinal uh, gut, uh, 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 gut cells rather than muscle cells. But uh, so th my first uh, point I'm making here is unless your dog has a type of disease where he needs to eat a special diet, uh, don't routinely give him uh, Hills, uh, Hills uh, dog food products. Same goes for your cats. Uh, the the uh, the kills a diet uh, for dogs. Their routine diets, their everyday diets, if you want to call it, whether it's uh, wet food or kibble, is just really sh cheap garbage. It's it's garbage. Uh, they want to make more profit at the expense of your dog or cat's health. I don't recommend their products at all, except again under pathological conditions if you get it and usually you can't buy these in pet stores anyway you have to get them from a vet or you can buy them online too 
uh, the you know the, the what they call the hill science specialty foods. That's a different story. Those are pretty good if you uh, to treat your dog if they have particular conditions. So that's out of the way. So first point, don't you know? Just like they say on vitamin labels, I always have a beef about this. And, uh, <laughs> I got in a little tiff the other day with this uh, this uh, TikTok pharmacist, this woman. She was doing a live feed, and she kept saying, every time somebody asked her a question about a food supplement or nutrition, she'd always say at the end of uh, her recommendation, and she knew almost nothing about nutrition. Pharmacists are not experts on nutrition, by the way. Anyway, at the end of each uh, recommendation for a supplement, or not recommendation, whatever the case may be, she would say, uh, ask your physician uh, if you want to know more information. And I got, after after hearing this like 15 times in a row, I was like going nuts, and I put a comment. I said, physicians know nothing about nutrition. They are not required to take any nutrition course in medical school. And she blocked me. She blocked me immediately. So my point here is don't look to, at your, to your veterinarian for complex questions about nutrition or supplements for your dogs. They are not, contrary to what you might hear, they are not experts on nutrition with with possible exceptions. I've come across a couple of veterinarians, I've never met them personally, but some veterinarians do study canine nutrition and actually are very well versed in it. If you could find one of those type of veterinarians, then those are those are people worth listening to. But the average vet, they know nothing about uh, canine nutrition, just as human physicians know almost nothing about human nutrition. They 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 have the same thing. They could recognize nutritional deficiencies in dogs, just like humans can recognize nutritional deficiencies in humans. But they can't advise you on nutritional supplements at all, or even the best way to eat. They'll keep giving you the old saw about eat a balanced diet, and this and they say the same thing for dogs. Uh, eat a balanced diet. Now, what the hell is a balanced diet in a dog? Well, here's where it's a controversy comes in. Uh, a lot of people who are, let's say, vegans or into e- eating plant foods, they have this idea that since uh, they think plant foods are healthier for humans, then it probably is healthier for dogs. And that's tr- true and not true. Plant foods do have a lot of, uh, let's say, nutrients that are not available in animal foods, animal foods under the general heading of phyto- phytonutrients, phyto, P-H-Y-T-O, that stands for plant. Some of these things, uh, like for example, sulforaphane, which is found in broccoli, helps prevent cancer in humans and dogs. You, you have to eat a plant, you have to eat broccoli to get that. You're not going to get that in any animal food. That's just one example. So, uh, but the, tr- the truth is that the, uh, the, the, the ancestors of dogs, which were grave wolves, and there's a debate about that because now they're saying that. Uh, dogs uh, don't necessarily aren't necessarily directly descended from gray wolves, but rather dogs developed through a, another line of species or something like that. It's kind of a controversy, but it's generally accepted that the ancestors of dogs were omnivores. <clears throat> an omnivore is a person or an animal who eats both plant and animal foods, and basically dogs are omnivores, meaning they can a- they can eat some plant foods. Uh, but they also are mostly animal protein species. They prefer animal protein. And while, while I'm on the subject, uh, I want to talk about, um, briefly, <clears throat> I want to talk about an experience I had with something called BARF. Though, again, many of you who have dogs or either either have your dog on BARF diets or, or uh, probably want to, you know, heard of them. BARF stands for Biologically Appropriate Raw Food. And this is based on the theory that the ancestors of dogs, they didn't have commercial dog food, obviously, 15,000 years ago. And the belief is that the, uh, the dogs that, uh, that are the ancestors of the current dogs lived on raw food. And, and they thrived on it. They, you know, the idea is that they didn't get a lot of the maladies that affect modern dogs, such as skin diseases, cancer, heart diseases. So... The theory is that by feeding a dog the so-called biologically appropriate raw food, uh, you give them the most natural diet, and uh, it has no uh, added ingredients, there's no artificial ingredients, there's nothing in the barf uh, food that, you know, that can uh, cause disease in dogs, so the dogs have a healthier coat, they have more energy, this is what the barf advocates say. Okay, now here's here's the flip side. 
The flip side is the barf diet consists mostly of animal meat, various kinds of animal meat, veal, raw beef, and all that. And the problem with that is that there's a there's a very high chance that the raw meat could could be contaminated with various types of bacteria such as E. coli and salmonella that can get your dog very very sick. And I've seen some pet stores that literally sell raw beef. They keep in the refrigerator. They sell these big raw bones. And, and I would never give that to my dog. Now, when I first had uh, dogs, I read, I read some of the articles about the barf, and it kind of convinced me that you know it did make sense to me. It seemed to be the most natural diet. Luckily, they had commercial versions of barf that were basically raw meat, but they had added fruits and vegetables, which I like because I know the protective benefits of fruits and vegetables. And I know that fruits and vegetables contain nutrients that help prevent cancer, which is the number one killer of dogs. So I bought a, a few of these, let's say, uh, commercial raw dog products. And I, uh, my dogs, quite frankly, didn't like them. Uh, they almost they wouldn't eat them unless they were starving. I noticed that right off the bat. And I realized some dogs just lap that stuff up. None of my dogs. I've had small dogs, maybe big dogs like that stuff. My dogs did not like it, but I kept giving it to them with the hope that it would keep them healthy and prevent cancer and other diseases. However, uh, I had just adopted a dog. I had my first dog, and I just uh, adopted a second dog. And I, and I started using a raw food. Again, it had added fruits and vegetables, added vitamins and minerals. Now, that's an important point because another problem with the, a barf, the pure barf diet, like just raw meat and that, it's not a complete diet. It's lacking a lot of the nutrients that dogs need. And if you keep these dogs on a purely barf diet, I'm talking about without added nutrients, your dogs paradoxically will get sick, but it'll be from nutrient deficiencies. So, you know, it's, they're lacking a lot of nutrients. Now, the commercialized barf uh, foods that I bought, as I said, they had a little bit of extra fruits and vegetables, and they had added vitamins and minerals. The vitamins and minerals were uh, added in a certain balance that's approved by something, and you'll see this on dog food labels. If you look at the, uh, where, where it lists the uh, nutrient content, it always says, this dog food is accepted for the uh, for the uh as, as nutrition for adult dogs by AFCO. What is AFCO? AFCO is the Association of American Feed Control Ofi uh, Officials. And uh, what they do is they set standards for nutrient content of dog foods. In other words, if a dog food contains all the nutrients that AFCO says should be in a food, they get, they, they're AFCO approved. That doesn't mean that the food's high quality. There's a lot of shit dog foods that will still have the AFCO approval. But, that, but they still have terrible ingredients like meat byproducts and all sorts of chemical garbage in there. It doesn't mean that they're good food. But so, you know, but so generally speaking, okay, that's some of the contours. I personally do not recommend, I, I, I know that there's going to, people are going to put comments under this video about how they give the dog a barf diet and the dog thrives on it and he loves it and he's happy. Well, what happened with my two dogs, I forgot to mention, is they both got serious bacterial infections. Uh, the dog that I just adopted, I only had her a week, I had to bring it to a vet. It cost me $600 to treat a, b a bacterial infection caused directly by giving them the commercial barf dog food. <clears throat> I learned a lesson from that, and uh, this was years ago. I never, ever gave my dogs a barf diet, again, whether it's commercial or whatever. I won't. You want to do it? Go ahead. But I, 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 the one piece of advice I can give you, if you do opt to give your, uh, feed your dog a barf diet, please give them some supplements uh, of nutrients such as omega-3 fatty acids and other nutrients, vitamin D, that will be completely lacking in the barf diet. If you don't do that, you're you're gonna you're gonna hurt you're, you're hurting your dog, so if you're gonna give your dog a barf diet, uh, and geez, I'd be real careful of that because there's a very high chance of the bacterial contamination of raw meat. I, I I wouldn't take the chance. So what what do you feed your dog? Well, generally speaking, I myself I prefer um, the more so-called natural dog foods. Uh, I like to have a grain-free. I go with uh, if I'm gonna give my dogs kibble. Uh, and by the way, everything I'm telling you, this is what I did with Bruno. Uh, I always gave Bruno kibble, I'm sorry, grain-free kibble. Why grain-free? Because the, the added grains 
and gil- that they add to kibble and other types of dog food are nothing more than filler. It, 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 it allows greater profit for the dog food company because it, fi- it fills out the food, but it's actually garbage. Uh, dogs do not need to eat grains. Contrary to what you might read, uh, dogs do not need carbohydrates, just like there's no human requirement for carbohydrates. There's no human requirement for carbohydrates for dogs. Grains are crap. They're filler material. So if you're going to buy commercial dog food, make sure it's grain free. Now there was a controversy a while back. Some dogs were getting a disease called dilated cardiomyopathy, a serious heart disease, uh, and they traced it to great grain free dog foods. Was this something in the grain free dog foods that caused these dogs to have this heart disease? No, well, actually, it wasn't the g- grain-free food. It was the fact that the food lacked an amino acid called taurine. Taurine is very important for the heart. Uh, in humans, it's a conditionally essential amino acid. Uh, it's uh, there's new reason. I, I've done videos about taurine. I don't want to get into it, but taurine is very important for dog heart health, and it's also very important. It's absolutely essential for cats. Cats cannot make their own taurine. I mean, if you don't give a cat taurine, uh, it will go blind. It, it actually will go blind. So they think that the uh, heart disease that was caused, they're not sure, but they think the, the dilated cardiomyopathy uh, the, in the dogs that ate, ate grain-free kibble stemmed from a lack of uh, complete total lack of taurine. And that's another problem with vegan diets for dogs. Uh, vegan foods are completely lacking in taurine. So if you feed your dog only fruits and vegetables, your dog will be lacking taurine or might get a form of heart disease. Don't recommend it. Dogs like meat, and they like protein. Uh, Another thing that's often overlooked uh, with dog food is uh, a lot of dog food is rich in omega-6 fatty acids, such as linoleic acid, but a lot of them skimp on omega-3. Or what they do is they pull a little trick on you. They'll they'll list on on the label, uh, so and so milligrams of omega three, and then when you read the ingredients, you find that the source of omega three is alpha linoleic acid or ALA. ALA is a omega three, but it's a precursor for the bioactive forms of omega three, which is DHA and EPA. Uh, a- 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 ALA is is only t- only two percent of it can be converted into the active form. So if you, if if you're going to feed your dog commercial dog food, get a separate supplement of omega-3. They sell them, uh, like, uh, what do they call them? Uh, fish oil for dogs. They have these little, you know, these little spray things. You could spray it on your dog's food. Uh, give them a source of omega-3. Omega-3 is very good for your dog's coat. It'll give them a shiny coat, and it'll prevent the number one reason why dogs go to vets, which is eczema and skin problems. And that's almost always a fatty acid deficiency. People give uh, their dog cheap dog food that that's lacking in not only omega-3, but also omega-6. And the reason these cheap dog foods don't have these essential acids is because the essential fatty acids are prone to oxidation. They go bad fast. and they, In other words, it would decrease the shelf life of the dog food. So these, these, dog food, these cheap dog food manufacturers, they don't put it in the dog food at all, and your dog winds up getting skin problems and other problems because they're not getting enough uh, omega-3. As far as protein goes, you probably want to give your dog about close to about a gram per pound of uh, body weight. So a dog that weighs, uh, adult dog that weighs 33 pounds, you want to give them about 25 grams of protein a day. Uh, uh, and uh, as far as fat goes, you want to give them about 14 grams of fat. Again, you want to focus on the omega-3 with some omega-6. A one-to-one balance would be good. In other words, same amount of omega-6 as omega-3. Uh, that'll give the uh, that uh, that'll give your dog a good balance of. Uh, of uh, of the of the uh, essential fatty acids, as far as uh, uh, as far as adult active dogs, uh, it, it depends on the size of the dog. Again, it depends on how active. Small dogs actually don't you know don't need uh, more than let's say 400 calories a day. Some of the big active dogs can go up to as much as a thousand calories a day, uh, but uh, 
usually it's uh, between 430 and 1500 uh, calories a day. Uh, another thing that I would advise is, um, well, let's see specifically. Uh, let me see here. Uh, hold on a second. There's a chart I'm looking at. Uh, puppies need a little bit you know they're growing so they need a little bit more calories uh, you don't need to you know you don't want to make them fat though that's another major mistake people make with their dogs they over you know they love their dogs they, they get, keep feeding them treats and this and that and uh, you know then the dogs when you go eat yourself uh, you have a meal the dogs gonna be sitting next to you and looking at you with those big eyes begging for scraps you you want to be careful with that because just like obesity is bad for humans, obesity is terrible for dogs. The, it, a, a, a fat dog has a, a, it shortens their life by as much as five to six years or more. Uh, fat dogs almost always get severe arthritis. Uh, they have trouble walking. It's just very bad for a dog to be overweight. So you want to be careful about that. Uh, exercise is very important for dogs. Uh, one of the things that I loved about having a dog, it always forced me to go out and walk several times a day. Good exercise besides the stuff I do in the gym. Uh, you know, walk the, you walk your dog as much as you want. The more exercise you give your dog, the better. Uh, as dogs get older, they might want to walk less, but you still want to give them exercise because just like in humans, exercise will extend a dog's life. Inactive dogs also have, have shorter lives. Uh, you want to make sure that they have a complete um, uh, spectrum of vitamins. Uh, the, the, just like humans lack vitamin D, dogs also, it's very hard for dogs to get vitamin D. Uh, a lot of dog foods don't have vitamin D. Vitamin E is very important. All the, all the vitamin minerals, you want to be careful of that to make sure the dogs have that. Uh, uh, if you could tell if your dog's not eating enough, you could tell because you'll, you'll be able to feel their ribs. Uh, you actually see their ribs. That means that they're just too thin and you're going to have to give them a little bit more food. Uh, if you can easily feel the ribs uh, and, you can, and you can see a waistline, in other words, you can see like a, a, an obvious waistline, that's ideal. That's ideal body composition. If your dog is fat, you won't be able to feel the ribs and the waistline disappears, just kind of like in humans. So... Uh, as far as, um, uh, again, meat, meat is, is, is the, uh, probably the best food for dogs, uh, but uh, fruits and vegetables are pretty good uh, because, again, they have those protective uh, nutrients. Uh, fiber is very important. Fiber prevents uh, uh, constipation in dogs. It, it helps. Uh, their, they have a microbiome just like humans. The microbiome will help prevent the number one killer of dogs, cancer. Uh, you want to uh, feed your dog maybe uh, anywhere from one to three times a day. Puppies probably three times a day because they need uh, to eat a little bit more often. Uh, again, when you buy the uh, dog food, read the label carefully. See what additives are in there. Uh, I, avoid uh, any type of byproducts. Uh, be careful of certain colors uh, and, and stuff like that. Uh, you can't go wrong. I, I think I really believe that you should stick with net with so-called natural dog foods they cost a little bit more but they they're much more protective of your dog's health uh, you want to avoid certain things um, there's a they, there's an artificial sweetener which uh, is very good for humans to prevent te uh, uh, gum and teeth problems called xylitol xylitol is very deadly for dogs you don't want to get uh, have your dog accidentally eat xylitol it can kill them you know it's a uh, what are some of the foods that dogs can eat? Dogs can eat carrots. They can eat. Uh, they don't cannot eat grapes or raisins. Never give your dog grapes or raisins. Grapes or raisins can cause kidney failure in dogs. They're absolutely poison to dogs. You want to limit the salt intake in dogs because too much salt in dogs, the sodium, can cause vomiting, diarrhea, and seizures. And in large, if you give too much uh, salt, it can be fatal. Peanut butter is great. Dogs love peanut butter. The only problem with peanut butter, it's got se it's got uh, 79% fat, 125 calories per uh, uh, for tablespoon. A lot of dogs have gotten obese 
because the owners kept giving them peanut butter, peanut butter cookies, peanut butter treats. Peanut butter is safe, but in small amounts. Don't give them too much peanut butter. It'll fatten them up. Eggs are a great food for egg, dogs. Uh, the, 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 um, some people think that eggs cause nausea in dogs. It's not true. You don't want to give your dogs raw eggs because of possible bacterial contamination, just the same as there is in the raw food. But cooked eggs are great. Uh, my dog Bruno was very finicky. He ate... <laughs> He didn't, I got to tell you, I, I must have tried 50 different dogs for all natural over the years uh, with Bruno. And he never really, he, he'd eat some of them for a while. And after about two weeks, he wouldn't touch it. He was very finicky, but certain human foods he loved. He loved human chicken, chicken food. When I say human chicken, I don't mean the chicken and dog foods. I mean actual baked or, or cooked chicken. He loved that. And he really loved eggs. That's one of his favorite foods, and I was happy to give it to him because of the high-quality protein and other nutrients that are in eggs. Uh, salmon is very good for, uh, for dogs if deleted. Cooked in boneless salmon uh, because it's a great source of natural omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, you don't want to give raw salmon uh, to your dog because it could possibly contain parasites, uh, which can be fatal to dogs. Never give your dogs chocolate because chocolate contains a substance called theobromine, uh, and it also contains caffeine. Uh, theobromine is especially toxic to dog dogs because it can it can cause vomiting, diarrhea, dehydration. It can lead to, uh, it can lead to internal bleeding, muscles tremors, seizures, and death. So keep away from uh, keep away from all forms of chocolate and uh, and uh, cocoa. Uh, cheese is okay to give to dogs. Bruno used to love cheese, especially when he was younger. But I limited the cheese because uh, uh, the high fat uh, content of cheese can cause uh, it can cause pancreatitis or an inflammation of the pancreas in dogs if you give them too much cheese because of the fat content. Blueberries are if your dog can handle blueberries. I tried to <laughs> I tried to give blueberries to uh, Bruno because it's probably one of the healthiest fruits you can eat, but he wouldn't eat it. But if your dog can handle blueberries, give it to him. Because it's they're fantastic for both human health and canine health. Popcorn is all right, but uh, I don't. Uh, I'm not big on popcorn because of the possible choking hazard. Uh, cashew nuts, I'd be very careful because of the calories. Uh, I uh, I myself had a problem recently with cashews. Uh, I, I go to I sometimes go to Costco. They sell these cashew nuts in these big two pound bags. I got in the habit of of purchasing. Uh, these two pound bags of cashews and I happen to love cashews and I said to myself what's eating a handful of cashews going to do it's not going to hurt me unfortunately I like cashews so much that every time I walk by that bag of cashews I grabbed a handful I wound up eating like two pounds of cashews a day this went on for about two weeks and I did a podcast and when I saw myself I was absolutely astounded at what I looked like I didn't realize it in the video I look like I weighed about 450 pounds. I look like I never touched a weight. And the only thing I had done differently in my diet was I ate all those cashews. Cashews are just, it's like taking globs of fat in your mouth. I must have been eating 12,000 calories a day when I was eating those cashews. I learned my lesson and I don't eat cashews anymore. I, I might eat them occasionally, but I'm not buying them anymore. I'm not, I'm not going to keep them around. Uh, speaking of nuts, don't give your dog macadamia nuts. They contain a, a, a toxic that hasn't been a toxin that hasn't been identified, but it can cause vomiting, muscle weakness, tremors, uh, hyperthermia, which is lower body temperature, and depression. Even when you give dogs small amounts of, uh, of uh, macadamia, they're also loaded with fat. And they could uh, uh, cause your dog uh, uh, blood. Ele uh, it can cause an elevation in blood triglycerides or fat in the blood in the, your dogs, and it could also lead to pancreatitis. Uh, I would limit almonds uh, because uh, they're a little bit hard to, for dogs to digest, and they could cause vomiting and diarrhea. Uh, a little bit of pineapple is okay. No onions. Onions contain a substance called N-propyl disulfide, which is a compound toxic to the dog. It could damage your dog's red blood cells, lead to a form of anemia. Uh, so uh, do not give your dogs onions under any circumstances. Watermelon is okay, but uh, don't give them the seeds. Uh, that's not good. Cottage cheese is okay. Again, limited. It's a great source of protein. It's almost pure casein, but too much can cause nausea and diarrhea. 
Bre- they say that bread is okay, but I don't. I think bread's garbage. Uh, it's just a filler. It, it makes humans fat. It'll make dogs fat. Blackberries are okay for dogs. No avocados for dogs. Avocados contain a toxin called persin, which is very poisonous to dogs. It, it can lead to fluid fluid accumulation in their lungs and chest. It goes breathing do- uh, difficulties, oxygen de- deprivation, and death. And this stu- and the persin is found in all parts of the avocado, including the fruit pit, leaves, and bark. Never give your dogs avocado. Corn is okay, but again, I, I would limit it. Same with tomatoes. Uh, green tomatoes, never. It contains a uh, toxin called tomatine, which is, uh, to- which is um, not toxic to uh, humans, but it's very toxic to dogs. Your dogs can have some oatmeal. It's a good source of fiber. Uh, don't give your to- uh, dogs coffee. Uh, too much can cause abnormal heart rhythm, and, le- and it can cause death. Apples that are sliced are safe. Uh, they also contain pectin, which is a good form of uh, a vitamin uh, of, uh, uh, of a soluble fiber. Uh, don't give your dog apple seeds. They contain cyanide, which is a poison. <laughs> uh, garlic is a gray area. I mean, some people think that a little bit of garlic is okay. Uh, I think you should avoid giving your dog raw gar- garlic because it contains chemicals called theosulfates, which are toxic to dogs. It can also cause anemia, just like the onions. So avoid giving your dogs raw garlic. Uh, some people think that broccoli isn't good for your dogs. Actually, broccoli is very good for your dogs. Uh, they can eat it raw or cooked in moderation. Don't over- overfeed them. Broccoli contains isothiocyanates. Uh, which, if you eat, uh, if you give too much broccoli, can irritate their digestive system. But they also contain sulforaphane, which uh, pr- helps prevent cancer, the number one killers of dogs. Of course, chicken is very safe for dogs. Don't again, no raw chicken. Uh, make sure that you don't give your dog chicken bones because they could choke your dog. Uh, I don't believe in giving dog any kind of bones because little slivers of bones could break off and and choke your dog and kill him. Of course, never give your dog raw chicken because of the salmonella threat. Sweet potatoes, okay. Uh, coconuts a little is, is not too bad. Never give your dogs any form of alcohol. Never. Uh, pork is all right. Uh, cinnamon in small amounts is okay. Uh, but in, in large amounts, it can irritate the digestive system. Uh, limit the amount of honey. Limit the amount of milk. Turkey is okay. Um, as long as it doesn't have any on- onions or garlic. Rice is okay. Uh, 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 what's really good for um, uh, dogs, uh, what's that? What's that? Pumpkin. Uh, if your dogs can handle pumpkin, it's, it's a, almost an instant cure for diarrhea in dogs. If you ever have a dog, you know, sometimes they get diarrhea, they ate something that didn't agree with them. If you give them some raw pumpkin or, or pumpkin powder that they sell in pet food stores, the diarrhea will be gone in a day. I've done this many times with my dogs. It works really well. Don't give your do- dogs any lemons or limes. It contains something called sorolin, which can cause vomiting and diarrhea in dogs. Don't give your dogs raw yeast, dough. Bananas a little are okay. Strawberries are okay. Oranges are all right. Limit your amount of peanuts because of the high calorie content and the fat. Uh, mushrooms are okay for most mushrooms. Uh, you can have some potatoes. Don't don't. Uh, no raw potatoes. Raw potatoes contain solanine, a, a toxic compound to dogs and humans. Celery is okay. Limit cherries, especially with the cherry pits because they contain cyanide. You can give your dog some shrimp. And I thought, oh boy, this how long is this video? This is the longest video I've made in a long time, but I'm going to end it there. I think I've covered most of the nuances that you need to know about animal nutrition. And I should also point out most of what I've said here also applies to, uh, to uh, cat nutrition, with the exception being that cats, you really, they really, really, it's very important when you give your cat any type of, uh, if you want to give them like a, a, a homemade diet or something like that, you know, get a little of taurine and sprinkle it in the food. Make sure your cats always have taurine. It's essential to them. And it's like I say, it's not found in, in, in uh, cats are, are mostly carnivores. And unfortunately, the carnivore foods that cats like do not contain any taurine. So you always make sure have to make sure your cats have tor- a source of taurine. So that's about it for this video. Uh, if you've lasted this long, thanks a lot. And by the way, if, if, uh, if you think my videos are of use to you and provide useful information, by all means, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'd appreciate that and also tell others about it. 
Uh, as you notice, I didn't push any commercial products. I never do. I just give you evidence-based information. Uh, you know, some people have complained that uh, there's no, you know, it's kind of bland. I mean, I have this black, 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 black uh, background behind me, and uh, I don't know what they expect. You know, I'm, I'm giving out information. I mean, you want me to bring in a chorus of dancing girls and a da and a marching band, uh, you know, or the fancy graphics? To me, that doesn't help at all. I mean, I don't see the point of that stuff. I'd rather give information, solid, useful information. And if that's what you're looking for, I strongly suggest you subscribe to my Applied Metabolic News, Applied Metabolics, where each day, uh, Applied Metabolics, uh, where, where I have uh, uh, extensive content on nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, uh, ergogenic aids, effective fat loss techniques, uh, what else? Uh, um, supplement science which supplements work which ones don't i, I again non-commercial I, I am not involved with any supplement company so i'm going to give you the truth women's health and fitness i cover more topics and applied metabolics than any other digital publication uh, and there's no other digital publication that can match my over 60 years of study and experience uh, nobody can match that. And all of that is included in Applied Metabolics. It's very readable because I was a, uh, a, I'm a professional writer for uh, over 45 years with over 9,000 articles published. I worked for uh, 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 magazines for about 20 years, and I know how to write for the public. Applied Metabolics is written in a magazine style, very understandable. Any technical term I will I explain right away so you don't have to reach for a medical dictionary. Uh, so s subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics. When you subscribe, send me an email, and I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information about nutrition, exercise science, and general medicine. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage where current subscribers only can send me short questions about anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics or anything that uh, that they want to know about that pertains to nutrition and exercise, as long as they're short questions. Uh, this is uh, a uh, service I I offer only to my subscribers. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, uh, I'm afraid I won't be able to answer uh, unsolicited questions. You're welcome to leave uh, comments, and I'm sure I'm going to get some comments in this video. I'm expecting a lot of people to uh, complain about what I said about barf diets for dogs, because I know that they're popular with a lot of people. I can only tell you that uh, based on the scientific evidence, they're risky. There's no veterinarian. Well, veterinarians, as I said, they're not nutrient expert. But the basic science, they're risky diets. They're lacking in essential nutrients that dogs need. Uh, and as I said, my experience, they got two of my dogs a barf diet. They got them very sick, and I will never, ever give any dog a barf diet. So... Uh, you know, do whatever you want. What can I tell you? So, uh, and by the way, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. They are the best friend. Keep them healthy. Give them a good diet. Exercise them and give them lots of love. And they will return it more than you could possibly ever imagine. Take care. Thank you for listening.